Welcome to GameSpot Live. I'm Greg Kasavin here to tell you all about Star Fox Adventures for the GameCube. But first, let me get all the Rare stuff out of the way. Um, as, as you probably know, Star Fox Adventures was developed by Rare, a company that's been making Nintendo games uh, for years now and, and has made a number of very good ones, uh, dating back to 8-bit classics like RC Pro-Am, uh, but also including uh, legendary games like GoldenEye 007 and some great platformers like Banjo-Kazooie and Conker's Bad Fur Day. Um, Rare was recently sold off to Microsoft, so Star Fox Adventures will more than likely be the last game uh, that the company ever makes for a Nintendo system. Uh, but with that said, uh, it's nice to know that Rare's going out with a bang, because Star Fox Adventures uh, is a game that spent a long time in the making, and it really shows. Uh, it, it's just uh, got a lot of uh, really impressive qualities, and it's, and it's a big, long game that is really definitive of what the action-adventure genre is all about. Star Fox Adventures is nothing like previous Star Fox games. Uh, the series started out uh, as basically a 3D space shooter. You, you just flew around and blew stuff up, basically. Um, the, the original Super Nintendo game was, was really cool, and so was the Nintendo 64 game. Uh, and, but Star Fox Adventures is a complete departure. Uh, and in fact, the game originally started development as something other than a Star Fox game, and later the Star Fox characters were, were brought into it. Uh, but you really wouldn't know that from playing. The, the characters and, and, the, and the story is integrated very well with, with everything else that's going on in the game. And in fact, uh, the game does a really great job of uh, fleshing out its, its different characters and um, making you grow to like them. Uh, the, the characters in Star Fox Adventures somehow manage to be uh, cute, yet pretty cool at the same time. The greatest strengths of Star Fox Adventures lie in its uh, really, really amazing graphics and also in, in just the sheer variety of stuff you'll get to see and do over the course of the game. Um, for the most part, though, the gameplay is, is typical of what you'd find in action-adventure games, uh, with you basically running around a as Fox through uh, this place called Dinosaur Planet and uh, solving various puzzles and basically trying to figure out where to, where to go next and how to get there. Uh, in so doing, you'll, you'll have to go on a number of different scavenger hunts, uh, helping out various uh, dinosaurs and, and other characters, and, and also just figuring out how to open doors and, and uh, unlock new areas and, and things like that. Rare is actually a bit notorious for some of its uh, scavenger hunt style gameplay, and uh, Star Fox Adventures does have some of that. As you go through the game, you'll have to collect all kinds of thingamajigs and what's-its and doodads and what-have-yous and all kinds of crazy stuff with names you can hardly pronounce and you don't even know what the stuff is, is doing for you and everything. You just know that you have to get it to pay someone off or to do something or whatever. And uh, you'll have to run around and, and look for these things in various different ways through each environment. Um, these tasks are, are never quite as overbearing as perhaps I just made them sound. Uh, but but they're, they're really plentiful, and at times the gameplay in Star Fox Adventures can get a little repetitive, uh, or even a lot repetitive. But the good news is, uh, soon into the game, you'll realize that pretty much just around every next corner, there's going to be some kind of surprise that's uh, worth waiting for. Um, it's, it's a game that requires some patience and uh, will require some backtracking and some running around uh, looking for what to do next. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's really forgiving and, and generally doesn't get frustrating. That's because not only are most of the puzzles uh, pretty simple and, and requiring more in the way of observation than actual uh, kind of thinking or logic, uh, you also have kind of an in-game help system. Uh, Fox can contact uh, his buddy Slippy, who's uh, floating off in outer space, uh, uh, apparently just there to figure out what Fox is supposed to do next. And at any given point, you could uh, get uh, basically a help screen telling you what exactly you're supposed to do. Um, it, it might still leave a bit to your imagination, but sometimes the solutions there are, are very specific, so chances are you're not going to get stuck at any one point in the game for very long. The controls in the game work very well. Uh, you basically run Fox around using the left analog stick, and the, the C stick, the right analog stick, is used to sort through your inventory. Uh, Fox has a magic staff that he could use to, to beat up enemies. Uh, the combat system is actually really simple. Um, and beyond that, he can execute kind of a quick, uh, evasive roll. And you can also push and hold the Z button to view the surroundings uh, from a first-person angle. 
the camera stays locked at a fixed distance behind Fox, but at any point you can push the left, uh, the left shoulder button to make it center behind him. Um, in practice, you'll be pushing the left shoulder button a lot uh, to, to cause the camera to kind of stay, stay at his back. But really, it's a nice compromise between having a, a fully manual camera and a fully automatic camera, uh, both of which cause lots of problems in other games. It, it actually works pretty well in Star Fox Adventures. Though the game starts off very, very simple, it, it does get quite a bit more involved as it, as it goes on, as you gain access to new moves with your magic staff and, and other new abilities. And also, uh, and also as you're joined by your, your trusty sidekick, Tricky, who looks like a little triceratops, uh, he can perform certain other moves and he'll kind of follow you around and help you solve puzzles. And um, also during the course of the game, the, the combat, which, which starts off simplistic, just uh, gets a little more involved. You'll have to think a bit more about how to defeat your opponents. There's some nice twists you can look forward to throughout the game. Uh, for example, there are these sequences that are a great throwback to the classic Star Fox games. Uh, you'll, you'll, be in the, uh, you'll be in the good old R-Wing and we'll be uh, flying through kind of uh, these 3D stages and shooting bad guys and, and um, flying through rings and, and the kind of stuff that you had to do in the classic Star Fox games. Uh, these sequences really don't last long, but they're, they're good for nostalgia and they're fun for as long as they do last. And uh, the good news is uh, the game is filled with plenty of other stuff like that, you know, from riding various vehicles to uh, kind of climbing and flying and digging and jumping and uh, just all kinds of different activities, teleporting and warping. Um, you're not just running around on foot the whole time, you're doing lots and lots of different stuff. Also, it certainly helps that Star Fox Adventures looks really, really good. Uh, just uh, pretty much everything about it just it looks outstanding. The, the whole world of the game uh, looks very much alive. Everything is moving. There are lots of uh, little animals scurrying about and, and uh, things to, to catch your eye and, and just little details that you can see everywhere. It's amazing that a game with this much detail and every scene is actually as long as it is. Um, the, there are about uh, more than a dozen different stages to go through and they just all look dramatically different, have, have different looking characters inhabiting them, um, and yet you can pass through from one to the next uh, pretty much almost seamlessly. The game has uh, next to no loading times in it. Star Fox Adventures isn't a flat out action game and it's not even a platformer. Uh, Fox uh, can jump, but his jumping is handled automatically, like in uh, Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time. Basically, he'll leap or climb or what have you whenever you run him up into a situation where uh, doing such a thing would be called for. Um, so really, this game isn't about reflexes. Uh, it's, it's just about exploring these big, huge environments and helping out the characters and, and uh, finding uh, all kinds of various things. and, and and basically saving this this planet uh, that's that's got all kinds of terrible problems um you'll you'll get to see a lot of really cool stuff along the way and and uh get to t participate in a number of pretty cool activities that may surprise you so even though star fox adventures is is uh, sort of a by the book action adventure game it's it's also a definitive example of what this genre can do it's it's a big long game with just lots to see and lots to do and and so uh if that sounds up your alley, then by all means check it out.